<risa> ese, ese, sí, sí, sí. Si gustas utilizar este para apuntar este. Sí, sí, sí. Pues vamos, ya, ya se queda mejor para. Sí, sí, sí. Está bueno. Ya, ya. Vamos a sacarlo. Ponerlo a presentar. Ya te grabaste. Ya está grabando. Sí, me viene acá. Ahí sí puedes. Este... Presentación en agua. Sí, por favor. Si lo puedes este, poner grande para ver si funciona. No me hecho ni vivir. Sí, muy bien. Gracias. Good night. Digo, sí. Good night. Good night. Good Good afternoon. Me Thank you for attending the session. Welcome. Many, many interesting words. Uh, you can do questions in Spanish, no problem. Uh, can translate questions. Uh, okay. Uh, the first presentation is the study and analysis of pH, conductivity, absorbance, and chemical oxygen demand of drinking like contaminated water and treated domestic water, uh, presenting Juan Jesús Rocha Cuervo, uh, et al, uh, Kata Krishna Tanjirala, and Aif Khan. Uh, this book came from uh, Prestige. Uh, Technological. Okay. You can start, please. Thank you. Okay. Well, good afternoon to everyone. Thank you for the presentation. And also, thank you for considering my work, giving me the possibility to share these results to all of you. And I'm thankful, thankfully, also for CCS uh, organizing committee and all the audience. For me, it's a pleasure to be. Uh, to be in here presenting these results in a, a important, important uh, research and development conference like this. Now, uh, also thank you, Dr. Maldonado, for presenting me again. Let's continue. This will be the table of contents that we are going to uh, use during this presentation. And please, I will display it just a little bit, uh, just for the audience to be able to to read it and can see this content. OK. As introduction, I want to talk about an issue that our problem that our country and the world faces, uh, which is the escalating economic costs, environmental damage, health risks, and the absence of effective technologies for managing the colossal volumes of uh, light pollution in water caused by the great industries. As wastewater generation increases, so does the priority to find innovative solutions for treatment processes. And now, talking about a priority or a prior solution, moving fed by reactor-based uh, water treatment plants, so now are, have become an effective, an effective uh, use technology for wastewater treatment in, in all the world. These biological systems actually provide a sustainable and efficient solution uh, to enhance the traded wastewater quality. Nevertheless, cellular contaminants or cellular um, chemicals like dyes have uh, structures that exhibit resistance to different degradation mechanisms, like, like those of presented in the MBVM, BBR technology. In the other hand, the transformation of wastewater into purified water is a key goal of unlimited water uh, reuse. And it's a global objective uh, in, the, in the new technologies based on MDVR. So this research focuses on analyzing the physical chemical properties of water to evaluate quality and 
its quality and safety use for people. Uh, now that's the reason we actually investigated and compared seven different samples uh, obtained from different, uh, different uh, sources. For example, in here we have three different samples obtained at various stages from a uh, wastewater treatment plant located in Atizapan de Zaragoza. And in here in green, we have the stages in which all the samples are uh, uh, correlated. The treatment plant in which we got the samples uh, works based on the MIBI and MIBR technology. Now, two other samples uh, uh, remarked in black were obtained from uh, this, uh, this type water sample used in laboratories, and the other one was obtained uh, from a model water uh, utilized for human consumption. The last two were obtained uh, in combination with dye uh, chemicals, uh, as you can see, methylene blue and uh, methyl orange. Now, the main idea of this work is to compare key physical chemical characteristics like uh, pH, conductivity, absorbance, and chemical oxygen demand uh, by these uh, characterizations. For example, the pH and the conductivity were tested in a, in a pH uh, module. The UV, uh, UV visible spe spectrometry were utilizing the spectrophotometer. And the chemical ocean demand was uh, by this methodology we have on the screen. Okay. Now, talking about the results, uh, let's first analyze uh, how the UV, UV visible spect spectroscopy. Uh, yes, how these results were obtained by this characterization technique. In this figure, actually, we have the combination of the absorbance of the seven samples in one peak. Uh, if we leave the uh, results obtained by the dyes, which are the uh, the orange and the blue um, absorbance results, we can take a closer look to the area we are uh, looking at the screen, just to see better and visualize how the differences uh, were obtained after the three stages of the MBBR uh, with water treatment plant. Okay. Now, as, uh, for example, talking about the samples of, uh, of the wastewater treatment plant, we have um, some interesting results, and I would like to tell the people here in the audience uh, actually a story. Mm -hmm. Uh, about how I understood the absorbance analysis uh, by, a, by a close friend of mine. For example, uh, the relationship between the absorbance and the contaminant was explained to me in a simple very way. And um, if there is a contaminant and you uh, run an analysis in the, the UV visible absorbance, Actually, the contaminant, if 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 the contaminant if the contaminant has a color, the you can see an absorbance peak of an absorbance result uh, in this in this image. If there is absorbance, then of course it means that there is a contaminant. Okay. If we compare the highest um, the highest uh, absorbance results from the wastewater samples uh, in comparison with with the dice, we can see how there is a big difference uh, between those results. Okay, so we can see that actually, or we can say that the absorbance results for the waste uh, for this water are actually minimal or negligible in comparison with the dice. Okay, the water actually uh, presents results uh, that were expected. As you can see here in the absorbance, um, yeah, in the absorbance axis, the y axis actually, the drinking water, the weekend uh, water samples have also negligible absorbance as expected because they don't have any other contamination uh, salt. And finally, with the artificial they contaminate the samples that we compared with the other with other five, uh, the absorption properties of the dyes 
are in agreement with the established uh, literature regarding their known concentration. And we can see here also uh, the normal wavelength results in comparison with the y-axis of the absorbance of each of the contaminants. As I mentioned before, these outcomes are consistent with the absorption properties of the dice. Now, based on these results, actually, we can say that uh, the water obtained from the treatment plant uh, could be used for drinking, right? As I mentioned before in this story, how I learned the absorbance between, or how, how, to, how I learned uh, to read these results of absorbance in comparison with a, contami a contaminant, uh, we can see here there is uh, no absorbance at all in the in the results from the from the wastewater treatment plant. So, just talking about these results, we can we can say in in commas that the wastewater obtained or the samples of the, from the wastewater treatment plant could be drink could be useful for drinking if only we are talking about the the these results. But also after this characterization, we'll uh, run some other uh, physical chemical characteristics of the water to learn the main differences between all the samples together. Now, talking about the pH properties we have in this um, in this slide, how uh, all the samples conform the stages advance, the pH increases from 3.7 to 6.6. .6. I would like to highlight the last value of the wastewater uh, of the wastewater sample of 6.6 .6 because uh, it is in in relation with a norm that tells that when wastewater is treated after it gets this pH, it could be used from some other uh, human purposes um, like. Um, for example, um, riego. Riego in English or the palabra, Okay, so regarding these results, uh, we can compare the, the most advanced uh, pH results with the distilled water and the drinking water. And we can see how the pH is close a lot from both of the samples. In comparison of the um, in comparison, this pH, which is close to the neutral point, we can see how when we mix together water with some other uh, artificial uh, dyes, each artificial dye um, makes the pH of the water most, most acid. Okay. After that, I would like to highlight also the value of the pH number seven because uh, this would be the uh, the range really close to what human needs to consumption for the consumption of water actually. Now, after pH, we also run some other conductivity uh, measurements and we can see here uh, how and actually how the conductivity also changes with respect to the, um, the advance of the of all of the stages of the wastewater treatment plant. At the beginning, uh, the conductivity at the beginning of the first uh, stage, we can see how the conductivity is a value really, um, really up, what, really up what, uh, about what we expected, and how conforming the stages advance, we obtain a uh, six hundred and thirty value of uh, of the of the final conductivity. In here, also, I would like to highlight that in conforming a norm. This value is um, acceptable for the for the same purposes as I mentioned before. Riego. Okay. Now, if we compare this result with uh, the drinking water examples, we can see how the distilled water has the, le the less conductivity in comparison with the other. And the uh, talking about the water water sample, um, it is this value of conductivity is expected to be to be obtained because of the all the ions that the, this water has, all the ions that we need for human consumption. In comparison with the artificial solutions, of course, 
you can see how it, it could be a double increment between 15 and almost 30 for one of the dice. OK, now finally. Talking about a uh, chemical ocean. Uh, chemical ocean element. Also as conductivity conforming the stages of the wastewater treatment plan uh, are done. The chemical ocean demand decreases from uh, up to values of 1000 up to uh, values of 80, 84. Now, again, I would like to highlight that these values of chemical ocean demand are uh, comparable and actually they are um, they are great for the use of human uh, as a vehicle. OK, now talking about the chemical ocean demand, we can see how uh, the bottled water and actually the distilled water have zero, so have zero actually. And in comparison with the uh, artificial solutions, this value increases a lot. And just I would like to highlight that the values are uh, bigger than the last stage of the wastewater treatment plan. And only uh, what we done, we have done with these experiments is that uh, we combine or we make a solution with 0 0.25 milli, millimolar of, of each one. Now, uh, with this, I would like to go to the conclusions before the, the time run out. We have the two uh, actually two interesting conclusions after all this analysis. The first one would be that the artificial dyes exhibit actually significantly higher pollution potential, even at lower concentrations compared to the waste generated by human disposal and the, re and the residual influence from wastewater treatment plants. Then, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, one of the main objectives of this work was to uh, learn how to compared the most uh, important physical chemical properties between the between different samples of water. Taking this in account to make a treated work uh, practical for real world use, if not not just for a uh, Riego, even in even uh, we could done different applications for drinking or some other properties. Ascending this absorption spectra is not is not enough. The only the absorption spectra or the absorption char uh, characterization is not enough to make or to have conclusions about the water itself. So it is needed to conduct a through uh, comparative analysis of key physical and chemical properties like conductivity, pH, and uh, chemical ocean demand and others to get uh, a most um, I get a high conclusion. This would be the references used for this presentation and thank you all for your attention. Thank you, Master Juan Jesus for addressing a serious problem that is now affecting human health all over the world. Uh, I'd like to uh, know if uh, there are some questions regarding the uh, issue awarded by Master Juan Jesus Rocha uh, in the present public or please. Is there a question online? Sí, Sí, uh, you are uh, named the, the samples are in different notation. No? Mm -hmm. Can you put a because I couldn't understand if you in this ID sample that you are using, you are reporting the, the sample characteristic or the sample measuring, the sample medium that you are measuring. Yeah, what we have done is uh, use these um, names depending on these stages. Where the sample were obtained. Oh. Mm -hmm. but the sample is the same, the, the catalyst. Mm. No, actually, the sample is not the same. Not different, but the same type. Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah, it is. Then you are talking about the Okay, sure. In the absorbance, in the absorbance, uh, lot. Oh, maybe the other is. Yeah. You, you, 
the name is sample name, and mm -hmm. you are giving the conditions, no, of the measurement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, it's not the sample, it's the measurement condition. Yes, it's, it's how the sample were obtained. Okay, and another question. Yeah. What do you expect in the information that you get in the COV measurement? Mm -hmm. What would be the expected what results? What is the, the better result of the oh, okay. course? Or? Okay, that's a good question, actually. The better result of the, of the expected result would be or will depend on the application of the in the application of the water. Mm -hmm. I mean, if water would be used for human consumption, it is recommended to follow the properties of the water water sample. If the water would be used for irrigation, <laughs> for irrigation, <laughs> thank you. Um, the expected results would be those that is uh, are highlighted in green. Um, in which I put the reference. Now, as as I mentioned, one of the main objectives is of this resource is to to do the comparison of what would be needed to change these results, pH conductivity and chemical oxygen demand, to reach those of the bottled water. As you can see, the application changes a lot um, if these results increases a minimum. Not for only reason, uh, not for a random reason. The reason would be the norms, the, Mexi the Mexican standards or the, or the norms. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you, Master. Uh, we expect uh, next year you can continue uh, the, 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 a thorough study of, the, of this issue that is very, very important for human health today. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I'd like to thank Dr. Kartik and Girard for presenting this work from Universidad Autónoma del Estado de Hidalgo. The, the title is Ultrasonicalis Project Undoped and Indian Doped Titanium Oxide in Films for Methylene Blue Degradation by Alicia Sanchez Gonzalez, Dr. Olvera, Dr. Kartik, and Dr. Everto Borges. Please go ahead. Thanks. Thank you, everybody, for coming to the conference. And today I'm going to discuss about our, our recent results about the effect of the dopant on, on water treatment. So start with some why it's necessary to do the water treatment and basic introduction, and I'll continue with my ex exact experimental procedure, procedure and some preliminary results that we obtained, and we'll finish with the conclusions. Well. So everybody knows that uh, it's very important to, to degrade the water, but the main reason is actually, this is a diagram which is based on the Mexico results. So in our country, generally 56.9% of the water is not treated. So we can really make it to the real real time application so we can really work it out to decrease this percentage and increase this. That's the main idea of, the, of all this wastewater treatment. So there are enormous methods and uh, different stages. And in fact, uh, in Hidalgo, apart from so many other properties, they, we have almost 17 water treatment plants which work to degrade the waste contaminants. But however, there is not even one plant which work with the the dyes or the in Spanish they say colorantes or dyes. Not exactly that. There are like five important dyes. One is methylene blue, orange, red, and uh, 
to other colonies, some other chemical oxygen demand where we can observe. So these are the major contaminants where none of the plants have been considered to, to degrade it. So that's the main, our main idea to work so much on this part to degrade the contaminants, not only in the laboratory level, but also to make it a bigger scale and really use it in a, in a water treatment plant. So generally all the treatments have been divided in, in five stages. So in the first stage is to remove basically the, the macro and micro particles, and which is, we call it as preliminary treatment, which is physical treatment. And later we go for the chemical treatment, which is generally major, I mean, of course we know chlorination, ozonation. In fact, uh, to clean our genes, we use fluorination. So it's very, very normal method. Even everybody in our home, we use, use those parts. And it continues with the biological part, where there are some kind of, there are using the lands and using the sands and some other plants. There are different methods to remove the biological contaminants. So these are some of the treatments. And finally, the most important and the most difficult part is, is to remove the nanocontaminants. So which are very smaller particles distributed and dispersed in the water. So one of the important in the final treatment that we work is the advanced oxidation method, which is uh, heterogeneous photocatalysis or photocatalysis we can there are a lot of names they say but basically a photocatalysis is as it says names it catalyzes the reaction degrades much more faster and we say heterogeneous because the contaminant is in the liquid form and our catalyzer is in solid form so there are two different phases so solid and liquid together so that's why we say it is heterogeneous that's, that's the basic idea so the catalyzer which is most popular and majority we use is titanium oxide and it's also commercialized and generally nowadays is they are using it really in industry to, to degrade the water. So the mechanism goes like this. It should, all the semiconductors have a, a small band gap, which is necessary. So the band gap is plays very important role in, in photocatalyzing material. So because the band gap or the space between the valence band and conduction band, it should be sufficient so that the UV light enters or the light can pass through it. And it is sufficient, the energy is sufficient to generate holes and electrons or electrons or hole waves. So generally, if you have enough, enough space, so the light can enter and it will remove some electrons and it forms some, some electron hole waves. So these charge carriers theoretically should react with our contaminant in the presence of UV light and the water. And theoretically, it should come CO2 and H2, which really never happens in reality. But anyway, that's 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 idea. So uh, generally, we say that we should not contaminate air while discontaminating the water. No? So the idea is to only CO2, H2O comes. It's not so much problematic. But generally, in contaminants, there are the main rings like nitrogen, sulfur, and other things, which really doesn't degrade completely to 100 percent. So the idea is that in future we are we work working on that so that we get very not only decolorization, but also degradation of the contaminant to 100%. So in this work, we have prepared different inoxide thin films by using spray pyrolysis technique with ultrasonic spray pyrolysis. So our conditions are deposition time 15 minutes and deposition temperature 400 degrees centigrade. And we used a methylene blue of 1.1 micromolar. That's the concentration. So we didn't change all these things. We only changed two parameters. The initial molarity of the solution and pure and doped in. So those are the two conditions that we will be discussing in this in this work. So the doped percentage also maintained constant. We only change the molarity of the sum. So interestingly, we have done the remember the deposition time was only 15 minutes. So we didn't expect this, but however, for uh, for pure titanium oxide sample, we got very amorphous sample. We didn't have any crystalline peaks. So it may be because we may increase the deposition time, it was enough. Or titanium oxide as it is, the phase forms more than 600 degrees centigrade, so deposition was at 400. There are different other factors that we can discuss. But however, the most interesting is with the same conditions, when we dope the material with India, we observe the possibility of the crystallinity of titanium oxide of 101 so it So we can form the phase at lower temperatures wherein the pure it wasn't possible, but after the doping, we observe the crystallinity of the material. So that is one of the interesting, and we have calculated the crystalline size. 
So it was around 28 and 36 nanometers for the increase in homogeneity. It's very obvious because it has higher concentration. And we have measured the surface electrical resistance in order to observe really the incorporation of the dopant did affect the conductivity of the material. It's not a bulk property, it's surface resistance. So as you can see, after the increment of the dopant, the resistivity has resistance, surface resistance has been decreased. So here there are two factors. One is the molarity and another is the dopant. So we believe that the molarity with the molarity, the surface resistance decreases or the conductivity increases. So yeah, it's it can be there. So we believe that it's because of the formation of the interstitial atoms and the liberation of the more electrons. And in case of the, it's very well known that increasing the dopant, we have more impurities and more charge carriers and gives more, more conductivity or less resistance. So finally, the, the one of the most important characterization of the of the work that I have told the parameter is the band gap of the material. So after the doping, our band gap has decreased from 3.38 to 3.32. It looks smaller, but however, we dope with a three weight percent, it's very less. And we're not sure how much dopant has been incorporated inside the material, but however, it was sufficient to reduce the band gap. So we expect that uh, the dopant one has higher, higher photocatalytic activity because it has very less band gap, so the electrons can and jump. But the most important is factor is for, for being a photocatalytic material, the minimum gun gap that you need is 3.3 electron volts. So they are in the range. So if it is like 3 or 2.5 electron volts, it's very small, the ULA cannot activate the material. So above 3.2, 3.3 electron volts, it's it's necessary for, for increasing the, for being a photocatalytic material. So we have calculated the percentage where we have measure the, this is the pure titanium oxide, and we have it radiated with different types of ultraviolet rate. So it can be very easily observed increasing the, the time, the degradation has been, the contaminant has been decreased. So we have resumed it in order to not, in our article we have presented all the results. So here there are most important points. First is the photolysis, which means that there is no catalyzer, only UV light and our contaminant. So it takes, we got almost some 30%, 40% of, of degradation, and it took more or less 260 minutes. And with the photocatalyzer, the time was almost the same, but the degradation has increased to 70%. So after the dopant, apart from the degradation, percentage of degradation was, was not so much, but however, the degradation time had reduced to half. From 260 to almost 120 was, was the time like that. So uh, the conclusions that we tell is that basically the the degradation percentage is 83.5 for the doped one. So the titanium oxide works as a very good material for photocatalysis and uh, changing the modifying the surface with different dopants. We have to choose very carefully which dopant we are going to induce. We choose indium because it has a similar ionic radius and this um, oxidation number is titanium is plus four and indium is plus three. So we get more electron pairs when we dope. So some other parameters that we consider in order to have higher, higher photocatalytic activity. So finally, I conclude that uh, uh, incorporating the indium, the photocatalytic activity increased the degradation and the degradation time has reduced it to half or 50%. And the inoxid films have been successfully deposited. And uh, the reason that for the decrease in the time and increase in the photocatalyst, we be believe that it's because of presence of more electron hole pairs due to the doping. That's all my time. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Dr. Again, a congrats for addressing probably uh, that has reached us and uh, is affecting the health of the population. Uh, in this moment, people in Mexico is consuming water to, with a high uh, metal content, such as arsenic, in Durango, in Aguascalientes, in Zacatecas, uh, Chihuahua. The effects of uh, carcinogenic is terrible. So uh, welcome these works that help to uh, get a better life for the
please. Uh, do you have any question? If, if you, if it's necessary to say in Spanish, no problem. Uh, please. <laughs> please. 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 Uh, which was the final value of the bank data? 3.3. The final value? Yes. What the initial value? 3.38. 38. It was. Uh, it was see, it's very less. And how are you thinking about um, to prove this experiment using visible light? In fact, uh, yes, we were planning. I'm interested, but I'm not, I'm not sure because as the methylene glow is at 664, it is in the visible, so it is possible. But uh, I'm not sure that because of the, the same reason of the band gap, the visible light is enough to, to, to do the, the, the work. I see, please. Can you please introduce you? It's evident the formation in uh, one step, no? Around three electron volts. Uh -huh. uh, yes. Uh, what is the reason of this step? Maybe because of the dope end or some other other the defects in, to the deposition. When we get sure. this kind of behavior, we associate uh, to the presence of two phases, not two different phases. And that but you are not mentioned nothing. No, I'm not sure because in, in I'm not sure because in the XRD we doesn't get any other phases, so I wasn't so clear. So yeah. I thought that that step may be related to the deposition. The structure was not completely formed, or the mm -hmm. line structure, some other defects in the material because uh, it was really different because the pure one we got, we don't have any signal of titanium oxide, so it was not completely crystalline. So the project was because of that. Yes, but uh, this kind of aspect are typical no? for, yeah. for titanium oxide. But another question. I couldn't understand very well the, the explanation that you give for the improvement with the addition of the indium to the Titanium oxide phase. I couldn't understand what you said that the, when you add the, the indium, mm -hmm. you gain electrons. Ah, because uh -oh. then according to well, my logic is titanium is uh, plus four the oxidation state in, in titanium oxide, and indium generally it's it's indium chloride we use, so it's indium plus three. So the ionic radius of indium is, is smaller. Then the titan. So when we incorporate, we will have one one atom free, which gives free electrons or holes depending upon structure where it gains. So that is one of the reasons it decreases very slightly the vanga, and also because if you have more more defects, so the vanga should decrease a little. And, ah, okay. That and is the reduction of the vanga. vanga. And okay. automatically, we suppose it have more electron pairs, so okay. you will get higher. Okay. It's not the level that you introduced with the idea. It's no. the reduction that of the compound. It's more convenient to have to use materials with a less bang up then? No, there is a minimum bang up because it should be activating with UV in case of UV. So I suggest we should between 3 to 3.5 electron volts. It's, it's convenient because less than 3 electron volts. It may not be activated by UV. In this case, it will be interesting to dock with uh, aluminum. It's yeah. trivalent, it's uh, smaller in size. Uh, but yeah. in, in this field, there are many interesting uh, options to explore. Uh, I'm sure it will be significant. Uh, the, the regarding the PhD students or master science student contributions. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>
Next presentation uh, is done by Ms. Margarita Vesasa Villato. José José Rodríguez Pizano, Gabriela Bobadilla, en María de la Luz Olvera. El título de Hort es Physical Properties of Zinc Oxide, Indium Doped Zinc Oxide, y que es deposited by Ultrasonic Sprite Pyrolysis, efecto Indium Concentration, a precursor milling process. Please, go ahead. Good afternoon, everyone. I I will about physical properties of cyanoxide doped with indium tin films deposited by ultrasonic spike pyrolysis, effect of the indium concentrations and precursor milling process. Uh, next, oh, it's ah, not working. No tienes el control, Aina. Oh, it's... You, you can see the control? There's no... Okay. This presentation contains a small introduction, experimental details, resident discussions, and conclusion. Okay. I started talking about defects on transparent conductor inside, but now it's yours. The TCOs must have two properties simultaneously. Low electrical resistivity tend to the minus of minus four omega centimeter and optical transmissions greater than 80%. The fields of TCOs are essential for many optoelectronic devices. In the figure one, we can see different applications. <coughs> Touch screen, solar cell, smart windows, and smart apron windows. In this research, we were seen outside. It has become one of the most candidate with respect to the others. To the others. Uh, for example, carbon oxide, Sinoxide, copper oxide, and others. The main characteristic of sinoxide on top of is exciton binding energy of 60 million electron volts, the band up 3.3 electron volts, optical transmissions over 70%, the stable phase hexagonal oxide. Doping the sinoxide can reach values 10 to the minus 4 omega centimeter and low cost, non toxic. The reason for choosing indium as a dopant is for ionic radius because they are very close or similar. This allows the best electrical properties. In the figure two, we can see the diagram they use in the ultrasonic spray pyrolysis system. 
The main advantage, deposit double fills with a wide variety of elements and concentrations of impurities. Does not require monocrystalline substrate and use vacuum techniques. The rate of ground of T-lex in the fields can be easily controlled under a wide range of deposition variables. The substrate temperature range from 100 to 550 Celsius degrees. Easy to change its price solutions during film deposition. The different layers and concentrations gradients on impurities can be heard across the films. The technique they consists of three steps. Preparation, preparation of solution. This solution generates an aerosol with the ultrasonic equipment and transporter a hot substrate. The substrate where this pyrolytic reaction take place. The experimental details. I start cutting and substrate cleaning, meaning of the synoxide, the precursor, at 300 RPM and volt power radius for one. The preparations of solution separately. The first, the synoxide is the zinc acetate and indium acetate and the mixer and the one, two and three atomic percent. Then the solution, the solution is sonicate for 10 minutes. Then the equipment, the ultrasonic chemical spray pyrolysis is prepared with optimal conditions. Then the films are deposited at 450 Celsius degrees by seven minutes. And finally, we make the characterization of the two films. The results and the discussions. The structural parameters. We can see the X-ray diffraction. The thin films of pure synoxide, the synoxide of million, the synoxide of million precursor, the synoxide doped with indium one, two, and three atomic percentages. We can see all the diffractograms shows a dominant peak is in the 002 plane to corresponding the hexagonal site. It's compatible with the crystallographic chart number 01-018-0074. In the table three, we can see the structural parameters. The crystal side decreases with the billet and the indium different in contents. In general, the crystal size decrease with indium increased contents. The crystal size was calculated from the external equations. And the strain and dislocation density, we can see the formulas. In the morphological parameters, elimination is done in an electron, electron microscopy. We can see the different images. We can see the particle size decrease with the mu. With indium, a difference, one, two, three atomic percent. The, the particle size increase with indium in, increase. In the figure E is different. We can see larger particles. We observe the most particle inside. In the figure six, six, the atomic force 
microscopy. The behavior is the same different. The difference is average roughness. The roughness increase or million. And indium with different indium contents. In general, the average roughness increase with indium increase at 20 percent. In optical in optical properties, we can see optical transmissions, the zinc oxide, the zinc oxide and million with million the precursor. We can see the optical transmission increase with the zinc oxide million. The inset, we can see the calculus the band gap by the tau metal without direct transitions. In this figure, we can see indium at different contents. We observe the optical transmissions decrease with indium increased contents. If the band gap in general increase, the genera increase band gap with increased indium content is attributed the well now most bursting effect. In electrical parameters and figure of merit, in this case, is the most important and resistivity. For this case, for TCOs, the best results to correspond the three atomic percent of indium. The value is 3.72 by 10 to the minus omega centimeter. We can see the figure it. In the figure of merit proposed by Hart, is is evaluate the most important because uh, relation uh, into the optical transmission as sheet resistance simultaneously. Optical transmission and sheet resistance. In this case, the figure of merit to corresponding the three atomic percent of PNG. Please, two minutes. Conclusions. No, we have six months. All the deposits, the serum site and doping with indium films present presented at the examiner Gusai structure and preferential orientation in the 002 plane. The scanning electron microscopy confirmed the hexagonal grains. The atomic force microscopy 2D image showed the similar surface characteristics as the same image. The CO oxide doping with three atomic percent sample present the highest average surface roughness. The Banga values increase with the indium concentrations from 3.34 to 3.5. The 46 electrons are result associate, associate with the burst time loss effect. The electrical resistivity decreased with the indium concentration as was expected. The three, the, the top and C with indium three atomic percent will present the best figure of merit. Three point. 22 by 10 to the minus over meters. Estimate for estimate from average transmittance of 
82% and shoot resistance of 40 omega square. Thank you. Thank you for presentation. Five minutes for questions. Uh, is there some question? Okay. And Maggie, you are presenting a study of results about zinc oxide uh, doped with indio. And this material is reported. your contribution for your the novelty in this work what uh, would be the, the novelty in this work for you in this work the meaning the zinc oxide the precursor. Um, we can we can observe to reduce the particle size and the conductivity is the best a million by times the the seven minutes. In in other um team films uh, the the prior times the 10 minutes for 40 minutes the the times to reduce the interesting part is the milli process not reported by some other authors regarding the same issues. Uh, no more question. So uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next presentation I have to do because my student Gabi is uh, with a serious uh, health problem. So, uh, so uh, this session, Dr. Guru uh, Maldonado is going to present this after. Thank you. Uh, the title of the presentation is Study of the Properties of Fluorine Doped Zinc Oxide in Phillips deposited by UESP using a minute zinc precursor. Uh, my student, my dear student, Gabriela Bobadilla, is uh, doing this PhD work. I hope uh, she gets her soon. Uh, please, next. No, I will give you the clock. Oh. There are the arrows. Uh, you, you can uh, okay. change with the arrows. OK, perfect. OK. Uh, this work is referred to the manufacturing of transparent conductive oxide in detail for in this case is fluorine doped uh, oxide uh, by deposited by cost effective technique. In this case, the sun strike pyrolysis. Uh, as do did mention the uh, master. Margarita, eh, TCO eh, requires eh, a presentation of both eh, 
high conductivity, high transparency, simultaneously, for TCO application. Uh, there are this, or oh, oh, this are some of the application for TCO films in transistor electronic device uh, as transparent contact for solar cells from flat panel displays. Uh, this is rarely applied because the high conductivity of TCOs. Uh, uh, previously, uh, I, I want to mention that uh, fluorine doping zinc oxide is a uh, an issue that uh, has not reached a satisfactory solution until uh, we have uh, reported the, the team reported the requirement of a uh, aging time of the solution. Uh, in this case, uh, conductivity decreases as the time of aging increases, reaching uh, saturation. Uh, the quest is to deposit a uh, quality uh, TCO uh, uh, with a as preparing solution, with a fresh solution. In this case, the effect, uh, as uh, we have noted with uh, previous work, uh, previous meaning the precursor prior to solution preparation has a beneficial effect in the transport properties of the film deposit. Uh, in this case, uh, for comparison, uh, in dope and lorin dope with minute precursor uh, were prepared. Uh, the results show, of course, that uh, we get zinc oxide defects with ursite type structure. Uh, it's notorious that has supported only few authors, unfortunately. Uh, we have changed of morphology uh, as compared with undoped films. In this case, I want to show you that uh, almost hexagonal films with a textured surface are present in this case. Milling process not only decreases the grain size, but due to the milling process, uh, the precursor uh, reaches uh, high temperatures in the order of 400 uh, degrees centigrade, gener generating new chemical species not identified until now or at least for our best knowledge is not reported in, in the case of moderate milling, uh, the kind of species that are formed uh, and that a posteriori shows a beneficial effect on the transport properties. Uh, optical properties are not significantly affected by the milling process. Uh, it should be remarked. Uh, as we can see in this case, uh, perhaps in the case of uh, some of the films, uh, some uh, situations are present degrading the transparency of the films in this case. But for uh, thicker films deposited for uh, this time, we have not significant change. Uh, Van Gap is referred as standard uh, value. Uh, the electrical properties shows a significant change for uh, uh, fluorine doped with zinc oxide influence, mille, milling the precursor previously. So as is uh, said, the positive influence of the milling precursor 
uh, is apparently evident. Is apparently is its bulk ele electrical resistivity and electromobility in prop uh, in a significant manner with respect to fields deposited with unneeded uh, precursor. Uh, yeah. This is the, the characteristics of resistivity and whole uh, constant current concentration, effective current concentration, effective electron mobility, and resistivity. Values are adequate for application as TCOs. Uh, conclusions. Uh, Mechanical weaving process is beneficial uh, for the deposition quality zinc oxide, fluorine doped zinc oxide films uh, with a fresh solution the same day, avoiding the need to uh, wait uh, one to two days uh, or perhaps one week in order to get quality films. Uh, this is the main contribution in our case, but this can be uh, also taken for some other uh, films regarding occupations as photocatalysis, uh, as gas sensors, uh, and some other applications. No? Uh, unfortunately, after publication of, of field work uh, last year, we have not seen in professional literature contributions regarding the, the milling on the uh, medium energy processing. It is more uh, frequent to encounter uh, results regarding uh, milling uh, taking in the order of days or weeks with high energy. Uh, meaning a uh, moderate energy process is rarely reported. But uh, in this work, we show the beneficial effect. Uh, okay. So, questions? Thanks very much. We have a session of the questions. Please, for favor. Which one is the time of the medium room? So, same box. How many? In this case, it's in the order of four hours, or perhaps uh, 10, 13, 45 minutes. It's not necessary to do a uh, extensive time, uh, merely. Think in the team that without a uh, motor faster can be enough to get or to improve the characteristics. This, this uh, milling process is doing in a planetary world milling that is very expensive and uh, is not frequently encountered in, 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 in school labs. Okay. Research centers. Uh, so, uh, inspect uh, making the meaning in most the uh, mortar test will be enough. Uh, we are working these questions uh, and can enhance the the coloration process. Also, uh, it can enhance also the gas sensing. Uh, characteristics, uh, perhaps some others. In, in, the, in the health field, uh, we have known that uh, milling the drug, the pharmaceutical, is uh, get a, a high potential for curing some diseases. And as any questions, please. On the internet, like online. Yeah. online. Oh, is there an application online? 
What is the thickness of the scaffolds? Uh, Twenty. Uh, they want to use uh, around to say it like that. Uh, uh, no matter uh, when enter the lab work. Uh, is disappointed that some variables are not controlled and under control. No? But uh, if then somebody disappoint and try to go for some other way, like selling tacos, aguacates, because perhaps it's the most uh, profitable uh, work. No. But uh, soon it, it, it can be noted that the main characteristics can be reproduced. In this case, field thickness in all the deposition techniques are a hot page, uh, are a problem because no control for reproduction. Yesterday, I attended an uh, advance and the student uh, based in radio frequency RF spooky technique is say the difficult to get uh, in every room the same homogeneous thickness. No? Oh, uh, that's a problem. No? But thickness uh, is uh, the main characteristics such as electrical resistivity, transmittance, uh, and of course, the performance as TCO, as a, 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 a catalyst in photocatalysis, as a sensor, in gas sensor, a warranty see, by using cost effective techniques. In this case, chemical deposition techniques. In this case, the film thickness has variation in. 300 to 600. Yeah, if possible, you can, like, for example, like what I see the electrical results, it can might be possible to use in the solar cells, no? Like as a window layer. Yes, yes. Uh, the the goal has been reached in this case because the students, for the first time, they are reporting the deposition of the quality DCO films. Uh, Get, get in with a fresh solution, the same day. No need to uh, aging of the solution. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you very much. Oh, no. Thanks to you. Oh, OK, so we. Now you're on. I just sleep with Thank you very much. This is Thank you. Thank you very much. Coffee. Coffee.